Hello, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to check out the Blade Coder Adventure Engine. Now, this one is kind of niche. First off, it's completely free, so um, that's good. Uh, but it is a uh, point-and-click adventure game-specific uh, game engine, and it's actually designed so that uh, if you're an artist with no programming ability, you can jump right in and make use of this guy. Well, if you are a programmer, it's actually built over top of the LibGDX uh, game engine, so you can jump in underneath and get uh, your hands dirty doing Java coding if you need to extend it. So it's sort of win-win uh, depending on which world you're in. Um, now I covered this guy quite a while back uh, but just today Adventure Engine 2.0 was released. Uh, sorry Blade Coder Adventure Engine was 2.0 was released. Um, so I decided to take a, a quick revisit of it. Now this guy is uh, available on GitHub. It's under the Apache uh, license, um, Apache 2 license. Again as I mentioned it's built over top of libgdx. Um, yeah and it's designed for um, you know your old school scum style you know Lucas Arts point and click style adventure, and uh, let's take a look at it. First off, you are going to need the JDK to be installed in order to run this. So if you don't already have Java 1.8 installed, you do need to install it to run. Um, and this is it. This is the example game that it it sh um, well it doesn't ship with, but it is available for download called The Goddess Robbery. Um, and this is the um, the main title screen when you load it up. Now this is a very very short game, but it is a complete one, and it does show how things work. Now you'll notice uh, we've got several different components that go together to make a game. So over here you've got uh, your different scenes. So this is the title scene that we're looking at here. But you can also do your main scene. We'll see that in a second, and uh, a secondary scene like so. But we're going to go back to the the main screen because this actually shows the programming model in probably the easiest form possible. On top of that, we've got um, various different chapters within the scene or within the game, uh, our overall game properties, uh, so global settings for our game, uh, different sounds that can be played within our game. We can go ahead and preview them if we so wished. We have assets in the current scene. This scene doesn't really have much going on. We'll see that a little bit later. We have the various different assets that you can use in your game. And you'll see here, you've got uh, the ability to load 3D models, which is quite cool. Uh, but you can also do sprite atlases, uh, music sound, images, spines, um, spine uh, animations. Um, particle systems and voices and uh, you also have uh, different resolution support so basically by ratio uh, half and one X kind of resolution to be supported here and you could create more as you wish over here we basically see our world so we have uh, our current scene is this uh, title screen we can see right here and we can work on your programming is basically done using a list of verbs or actions and they can happen at the world, the scene, or the actor level. So for this this case, again, very simple. We have this title scene. And you'll see if you go to the scene level, there's the init and leave. And init is what's going to fire off when it's first loaded. And you can see the verbs that are attached here. Uh, so it's cutscene mode set to true. Uh, sets the property embedded to false. Shows inventory to false. Um, sets some text on the screen. Waits for two seconds. Sets shows inventory to being true again. And then switches out to the leave function. Now the leave function, very simple. Basically show inventory and leave scene for scene one. And that's kind of the extent of your programming. Very, very simple, very straightforward. You can add new verbs clicking here. Um, there's different values or conditions available. Uh, various different uh, scenes are available programmatically. So it's very, very simple, straightforward program going on. And again, if you are an artist looking to create an adventure game, this might actually be the perfect engine for you on that level. Um, so that is the, the simple level of uh, this particular scene. Let's go to a slightly more complex scene. So we'll go back to scene one. And here you can see your world editor over here. Up here, you've got your various different inventory items out of scene. Um, so this is your uh, editing viewport as you can see you can zoom in and out of it as you wish pretty smoothly and here we'll select an actor within the scene so this is your main character so you can see over here it's selected it here are all the various different items available within this particular scene so you can see we've got our player selected so with the player selected you can see the different uh actually there's no particular code attached to him but you can see the animations that are available for him you can see a preview of it up here so for example um walking backwards like left, front, etc. So you can you preview the anim the animations attached to that particular person. Um, drag and drop entities around the scene. You've got down here your view options. You can go ahead and turn animations in the scene on. So you actually see the preview right there as opposed to up in a small preview window. Uh, we can show walk zones. These are uh, um, 
spline paths that your character can follow around when walking. Um, we've got a debug console that's hidden away that shows you errors as they occur, or we can obviously turn those things off. Now, as I said earlier, it's built on top of the libgdx game engine, so it actually hooks out to some of the tools available in libgdx as well. So you've got your internationalization support for different flights. Um, you can export the UI images. Uh, we can fire off the particle editor. And this, again, is simply the libgdx particle editor, uh, which is being spawned out. It's a cool little uh, editor. It's not high DPI font aware, apparently. But it allows you to um, you know, create and preview particle systems, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. We've got uh, various different dialogues available for this person. So we're going to go ahead and run the game. Do -do -do. So we're actually running the scene, not the game in this case. So loading up over here. All right, so continue. And here we are in our world. You can walk around, navigate, click items. You've got the menu options that pop up. Those items are all configurable set. You can configure how you want the menu to appear, pie style, etc. cetera. Um, and then, you know, the text interacts when he does particular things. Very straightforward. You can hear the music playing in the background. Um, by no means is this the world's most complex editor because it sets out to do one particular task and that is to create adventure style games with minimal programming requirement and it does that it's got the ability to bring all your various different assets in your animations in your sound files in to string them all together to do text overlays to internationalize text basically everything you need in here to create an adventure game and then your next question is all right so what can i make my game for well you come on back over here and you see we've got the export options here and your architectures are basically desktop, Android, or iOS. And then if we stick with the uh, desktop one, we've got uh, Windows 32, Windows 64, Linux 62, Linux 64, and OS X. So basically you can make your game for iOS, Android, um, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So pretty much most of the major targets you'd wanna hit. And you can also have it uh, decide how to you know bundle the uh, bundle the uh, Java uh, executable with it or not. Uh, you, you can pick where to find each particular version to bundle. Uh, you can set an icon for it and that's about it. Then when you're done, you click okay and it creates an, um, this appropriate uh, executable for your platform of choice, be it an APK or an EXE or whatever makes the most sense. All right, uh, that's kind of about it. Uh, that's the uh, adventure editor. I will link down the um, the closer look I did a couple years back down below might be useful. It actually shows you a bit more of the hands-on how to use it stuff, and most of that stuff stayed pretty consistent with it. Uh, I will also obviously link um, to the uh, uh, the GitHub page for this game engine. Uh, so if you do want to check it out, again, it's just a zip file. You just download it, run the batch file, and uh, it loads up the editor. Again, you do need to have the Java um, development kit installed for it to work, but that's about it. Um, and I hope you found this useful. It's, it's a cool engine. I love these. Uh, I love engines that actually leverage other engines. Like I love the fact that this is tooling built on top of the uh, libgdx tooling. And I like that it's niche. I like that it's accessible for, again, if you're an artist looking to create a 2D game portfolio, this could be a nice little tool for you. It's not, you know, you can do all of this stuff in Unity or Godot or Unreal, and, but it, it's probably massive overkill. You know, so if you're doing your hidden object game or your uh, point and click adventure game, you don't need all that those engines bring. This this guy is a stripped down, um, very well defined game, um, adventure game engine specifically, and that's it. And and that that's it part of it is probably what makes it really shine. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that useful. If you did, of course, please click like. And if you're into game engines and all that stuff, do hit subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, that is it for now. That was Adventure Editor. Just hit uh, version 2.0. And uh, like I said, it is uh, linked down below. All right, see you all later. Goodbye.